The lunatic is on the grass The lunatic is on the grass September 6th, 2013. It's being reported that there's been another chemical weapon attack in Syria. This time they're claiming Assad used chlorine gas. I've provided the links below. It's becoming clear that the Congress critters in the House will vote no to a Syrian invasion later this week, not because they are concerned with doing what's right, but because they are more concerned with maintaining their positions of power. Last week, Israel launched a missile, a shot across the bow in the Mediterranean in a blatant effort to provoke Assad to respond militarily, later stating that they were just conducting a joint exercise with the U.S. in the area. The problem with this story is that you must provide notification to commercial traffic in the area, and this was not done. This was an obvious attempt to go to Assad into firing on U.S. Israeli ships and give the regime the excuse to start firing missiles into Syria. Game on. Congressional approval not required. Understand one thing. Israel, Zionist Israel, is not our ally. They're our keepers. They're using our military might like a sock puppet to carry out their dirty deeds. They are the ones who time and time in the past have carried out false flags. The USS Liberty, the Levon Affair, 9-11, oh yes, many of us remember the story of the dancing Israelis who turned out to be Mossad agents, the bombing of the King David Hotel in 1946, the bombing of the U.S. Marine Barracks in Beirut in 1983, and the most recent provocation last Tuesday in the Mediterranean with this so-called joint exercise, and the list goes on. Have these psychopaths thought about what happens if bombs start falling on Syrian chemical weapons depots? Obama's already announced they have targets. Do they actually know where these stockpiles even are? Was any consideration given to the tens of thousands of people that will die if one of these weapons depots are blown up? Obama is going to get this war started despite the overwhelming opposition by the American people and the global community. He's already laying the groundwork to lay blame and take credit for his actions. This is going to probably play out in one of two ways. Number one, Obama's regime will not allow a vote on the issue and act unilaterally, standing on his red line tough talk rather than risk further embarrassment in the global community. A red line that Obama is now claiming he didn't draw. Humanity drew it. No, Mr. Obama, you made that statement, and we have the videos to prove it. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. Number two, he will bow to a no vote in Congress temporarily until the false flag attacks start popping up here so he can address the American people in an I told you so manner, taking the position he was right all along in an attempt to regain some credibility. But we, the people, won't buy it. The position among the warmongering Beltway barnacles is that they must support Obama in military strikes against Syria for him to save face. Well, let me ask you, Mr. Obama, how many faces will have to be lost to save the face of this one megalomaniac. To the people of the Middle East, whose only crime was to dare to sell their resources for a currency of value other than the petrodollar, we, the 91%, apologize to humanity for the absolute devastation that the U.S. regime is, if they have their way, going to rain down on you. We have lost control of the collection of power, money-hungry maniacs masquerading as our legitimate government. When the bombs start falling, either by false flag or by an executive declaration of war, I wonder if Mr. Putin has considered making the NSA data center and Washington, D.C. his first and second targets. 
not necessarily in that order. Instead of escalating the bloodshed in the Gulf, the loss of innocent lives, collateral damage as they like to call it, and our military men and women in an outright war of aggression and global dominance. To the 9% or less of Americans that feel we should take military action against Syria for humanitarian reasons, after invading Iraq, Libya, and installing a puppet government in Egypt, what was the first thing the globalists did? It wasn't restoring their infrastructures, building hospitals, or replacing homes and schools they destroyed. No, they established a private central bank in each of these countries. Make no mistake, the US dollar is in its death throes as the global reserve currency, and there isn't a body count high enough to dissuade them from trying to hold on to it. I don't think there's any question who will light the match that will ignite World War III. The lunatics are running the asylum in DC and Obama has the launch codes. It's not the Russians, Iranians, or Chinese you have to worry about making a nuclear first strike. Remember, the United States was the only nation to ever use a nuke on another country in a show of force even after the Japanese agreed to a surrender, albeit conditional. The seeds have already been planted by outgoing Secretary Janet Napolitano 10 days ago, stating, and I quote, a massive and serious cyber attack in the U.S. homeland is coming, and a natural disaster the likes of which the nation has never seen is also likely on its way, end quote. Does she have a crystal ball where she can make such definitive statements or is it more likely that she's seen the plans that were already orchestrated and yet to be carried out? A few weeks ago in August, the New York Times, the Stock Exchange, and several financial institutions were claimed to have been hit by a cyber attack, not once, but several times. Was this just a test, as Maria Bartiromo accidentally blurted out in a live interview? They are telegraphing what they are going to do. And here's another thing to think about. The USS Enterprise is the oldest nuclear-powered supercarrier in the US fleet, and it was scheduled to be de decommissioned this year under the National Defense Authorization Act of 2010. So why was it sent to the Mediterranean in November of last year? A nuclear-powered supercarrier that had lived out its usefulness unless there was some other reason for it being there. Could it be that it would be struck by a missile or blown up and the attack will be blamed on Syria or Iran? We know what happened in the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Remember, Syria is being used as a gateway into Iran. Iran is the real target here. It's coming, and if it doesn't happen in the Middle East, it's going to happen here, and we're going to be told it was a terrorist attack, an act of war, and this will give the regime the excuse they need to act solely on executive authority for a military response, and this will be a lie. They are going to go for something big, an event on such a scale that would create an, an immediate emotional response that would lend justification to this regime's response. And of the possible scenarios they've already planned will end badly. But the worst case scenario, I believe, would be an alleged cyber attack that brings down a sector of the electrical grid. What impact would that have on the any number of the, of our 104 nuclear plants, which are already in serious disrepair. And when they hit us with this disaster, attack, false flag, whatever it turns out to be, they will attempt to divide us racially, socioeconomically, political, and by our individual re religious persuasions. Don't buy into it. Government is going isn't going to be there to save you. We will have to rely on each other because if we don't, we will destroy ourselves and be destined to repeat humanity's mistakes over the past millennium over and over until maybe eventually we get it right. 
We cannot rebuild using the same tools that were used to create this insanity we call civilization today. I want to leave you with this. History has shown us that whenever powerful governments act against the will of the people, use their military as pawns for foreign policy agendas, and force them into wars of aggression they don't morally support, these regimes fell to military coups. We are on that threshold. The promise Obama made of a transparent presidency in his 2007 campaign was the only promise he kept. His presidency is transparent, all right. We can see right through him. As always, I've placed links in the description below. To my subscribers, I want to thank you for your support. You guys get it. Remember, realize, recognize, realize. Keep doing what you're doing. Share this video with everyone. Time is running out. I look forward to your comments and your thoughts on this topic. Thank you.